What separates good resuscitation clinicians from truly elite ones? It's not just skills or experience, it's a specific way of thinking we call the resuscitation mindset. Today I'll show you the seven traits that could mean the difference between life and death for your patients. My name's Cliff Reed, and I work in emergency medicine, intensive care and retrieval medicine. Anywhere really that lives hang in the balance and over the years I've worked alongside some incredible clinicians who don't just excel at resuscitation, they absolutely thrive at it. And here's what I've noticed, they all share something special. It's not about which profession they're from or what specialty they practice, it's a way of thinking and acting that makes them exactly the person you would want treating your family in a medical crisis. This is the resuscitation mindset. And today I want to break down what makes these people so effective. First up is the pursuit of mastery. The best resuscitationists are never satisfied. They're always reading, they're training, they seek out mentors, they seek out challenges, new clinical experiences. They know that excellence takes a lifetime of deliberate practice. But here's the thing, they don't just work on themselves, they build infrastructure. They create the checklists, they do the teaching, they ensure minimum standards, they care about operating procedures because they want to know that their department or their service is functioning brilliantly for patients even when they are not personally there. So they build the systems that work around the clock. For rare procedures like balloon tamponade, for example, they create quick reference guides, and cognitive aids that can help teams perform to the right standard every time. They're also skilled negotiators, whether it's convincing your management to fund new equipment or whether in the moment persuading a surgeon to take a bleeding patient to theater. These skills can literally mean the difference between life and death. They employ tactical communication methods and they study influence and persuasion because lives depend on it. And this brings us to dedication, a hundred percent commitment to the patient in front of you and to your team to achieve what the patient needs. The resuscitation mindset means never giving up and ensuring that if someone could have been saved, they would have been. But we can't do this alone. The patient doesn't care about individual brilliance. They care about team performance. So resuscitation and conditions with the right resus mindset build synergy through communication, shared mental models, and building strong cultures in their organization where people genuinely care about each other and share a common vision. Even with all the systems and training, you need self-efficacy. The absolute belief that when the moment comes, you'll perform. It's one thing to practice on mannequins. It's another to know you'll act when it matters most. In psychology, self-efficacy is an individual's belief in their capacity to act in the ways necessary to reach specific goals. It's a self-belief that you can do what you need to do to achieve the goals in the moment. Resuscitationists take responsibility. This is the concept of extreme ownership. When things go wrong, they don't blame others. They ask how they could have communicated better or worked more effectively with that person or built a stronger system for when they're not there. My own team does this through hot debriefs using our stop five method. Summarize the case, things that went well, opportunities to improve, and most importantly, points to action. Real responsibilities we'll take to change things for next time. All high performance organizations have a form of after action review where they look at what they've done non-judgmentally in a blame-free, curious environment where everyone shares the goal of just wanting to get better next time. So let's bring it home. The first one is mastery. Always learning, always improving, always refining mental models. Infrastructure, working on the systems and processes for smooth resuscitations around the clock. Negotiation, building tactical communication skills, including human persuasion and influence. Dedication, 100% dedication to the best possible outcome for every patient. Synergy, working together with other team members and building strong cultures. Efficacy, 
believing in our ability to get the job done when it matters and taking responsibility, demonstrating extreme ownership of every resuscitation. This is the resuscitation mindset. And whether you're in emergency medicine, intensive care, or any field where lives are on the line, this mindset can make all the difference. These are the things we should be working on every single day. Thank you for watching, and I wish you and your teams and your patients the very best.